Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we begin this day by celebrating the Holy Eucharist together with our Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And with her, we open our hearts and our minds to God's Word so that God may plant His seed, the seed of His Word in our hearts. To prepare ourselves to receive God's Word and God's sacrament, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Holy Mother of God may, with the help of her intercession, rise up from our iniquities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach, until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in an unapproachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful song. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people, the flock He tends. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. For He is good, the Lord, whose kindness endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. With you and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him what the meaning of this parable might be. He answered, Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest, they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, and hear but not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. 
Those on the path are the ones who have heard. But the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, they are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with a generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, in the Gospel parable of the sower, that I am sure many of us are familiar with, I would like to point out today that in this parable, who is the sower and who is the soil? Sa narinig po natin na Ebanghelyo ngayong umaga na ito, nais ko pong pagnilayan natin sino nga ba ang nagtatanim at sino ang lupa na tinatamnan. Una ay napakahalaga na makikita natin ang nagtatanim ay walang iba kundi ang Diyos. At sabi nga ni Jesus, ang mga buto na itinatanim, ang mga punla na itinatanim ay ang salita ng Diyos. The sower is God and the seed, according to Jesus, is the word of God being sowed. But who is the soil? My dear brothers and sisters, it is not none other than us. It is you who is the soil. Tayo, ikaw, ang lupa na pinili ng Diyos para tamnan ng mga punla ng salita ng Diyos. And maybe you are asking me, you will be asking me this morning, ako, ako, ba, ako ba ang pinili ng Diyos? No? Maybe many of us will be wondering, who is this soil? Isn't it the priests, the missionaries who are the soils of God's Word? No, all of us are chosen by God to be the soil where He would plant the seed of His Word. And this morning, my dear brothers and sisters, this is what I want you to do this morning first. To be in wonder, to be in awe, and realize that God has chosen you as the soil where He will plant His Word. And let us ask ourselves this morning, tell ourselves this morning, isn't it wonderful that I am chosen by God? I am the soil where God will plant His Word. Sana ngayong umaga, sa pagninilay natin sa misang ito, yan po muna ang unang-unang gusto, ko ninyong, uh, gusto kong gawin ninyo. 
na tayo ay mamangha. Napasalamatan natin ng Diyos na pinili niya tayo na tayo ang lupa kung saan nais niyang itanim ang kanyang mga salita. Tell God today how wonderful it is to be the soil where God chooses to plant the seeds of His Word. Kayo na nakikinig ngayon ng misa na ito, habang nakikinig tayo sa salita ng Diyos, ay tinatanim na niya, pinipili niya tayo, at nais niyang maitanim ang kanyang mga salita sa ating puso. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, if you feel that in these times, you feel dry, you feel like you are a soil that is dry, you feel that you are being choked by anxiety, you feel like the thorns of this world are choking you, then do not forget to cultivate the soil of your life with God's Word. Most of the time, my dear brothers and sisters, what we receive daily are words that hurt, words that make us weak, words that make us violent. These are words that will really choke your life. And so this morning, let us choose to hear and listen to God's words. Maraming mga salita na naririnig natin ngayong mga panahon na ito, mga salita na hindi maayos, mga salita puro bangayan, mga salita na hindi magaganda na lumalabas sa bibig ng mga tao, mga kasinungalingan. Yan ang mga nagpapatuyo ng lupa para sa salita ng Diyos. Pero ngayong umaga na ito, piliin natin makinig sa salita ng Diyos. Dahil pinipili ka ng Diyos upang ikaw ay maging lupa kung saan itatanim ng Diyos ang kanyang mga salita. And we will see also today that what is the plan of God for choosing us to be the soil? Ano ba ang gusto ng Diyos? Ano ba ang plano ng Diyos? Bakit kaya pinipili tayo upang tayo ang maging lupa na tatamnan niya ng kanyang mga salita? In our first reading today from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, we see here the plan of God. He said, My dear brothers and sisters, I charge you to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ at the proper time as our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is the plan of God. Before He returns to this world, He is now planting the seeds of His kingdom, the seeds of His word to all of us, so that when He returns, He will see a beautiful garden full of plants, full of fruits coming from His Word planted on our soil. Ang plano ng Diyos ay itinatanim na niya ngayon pa lang ang kanyang mga salita nang sa gayon pagbalik niya ang makikita niya 
ay isang mundo kung saan namumulaklak, nagbubunga ang kanyang salita. Do we want that? Or would we want that God, when He returns, He would see a dry land without plants, without fruit, without flowers? And God would ask, What happened to the soil? What happened to the seeds that I sowed? Let us become a rich soil so that when Jesus returns, He would see a beautiful place, a beautiful garden full of plants that bear fruit of His seed of the Word. Our example for this morning is none other than our Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who became and was chosen by God to be the soil where He planted His Word. And we see that in the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary, she really became a rich soil. And until now, Mary is still bearing much fruit for us. Mary is still praying for us. Mary is still performing miracles for us by praying for us, by interceding for us. That is how fruitful the soil of Mary is. Sa misa pong ito ay manalangin din po tayo sa ating mahal na ina. Hanggang ngayon, ang itinanim ng Diyos na salita sa puso ni Maria, hanggang ngayon ko ay namumunga. Sapagkat hanggang ngayon, ang ating mahal na ina ay gumagawa ng kabutihan, nakikinig at nananalangin para sa atin. This morning, let us say to ourselves, Isn't it wonderful that God has chosen me to be the soil where He would plant the seeds of His Word? Amen. Christ teaches us through the parables. Christ is the sower of the seed of God's Word. Let us respond to His work by praying to the Father. And for every petition, let us say, Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. That the church in the world may be like the rich soil yielding a hundredfold harvest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of the, the harvest, be gracious, gracious to us. That the leaders of our nation may govern in a way which is pleasing to God and to its citizens, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of the, the harvest, be gracious, gracious to us. That unchecked ambitions and selfishness may never choke the Word of God in our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. Let us pray for an end to the pandemic, that the sick be healed, especially our beloved Archbishop, Jose, that those who care for them be strengthened and help us all to persevere in faith and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. That those who have died may enjoy light, happiness, and peace in heaven, and may those burdened with grief be strengthened by God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. 
Heavenly Father, help us to recognize the seed of your word at work in our lives. May we never get distracted by the cares of this world, but be active in your service and so produce an abundant harvest. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. As we honor the memory of the mother of your Son, we pray, O Lord, that the oblation of this sacrifice may by your grace make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all of you who are uh, joining us in this celebration of the Holy Eucharist from the Manila Cathedral. And uh, we would also like to assure everyone of our prayers, especially those who are sick right now, those who are in the quarantine facilities, who are joining us in this celebration, our religious sisters who are also joining us, those who are quarantined, those who are sick, our dear sisters from the RVM, the Religious of the Virgin Mary, and other uh, sisters who may be affected, convents who may be affected by this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. We are one with you in prayers. And let us allow ourselves, even in times of sickness, to become a good soil, to receive God's Word, 
And we know but that by receiving God's Word in times of sickness can bring healing and strength for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Ang sarili ay aming handog Kaming tapat at nalang